What's up, Playmates? Well, tonight I've been getting a lot of comments about doing a show on loneliness. And uh, so tonight is going to be that show. We're going to talk all about the, the loneliness that we all have to experience while we're on this, um, this journey, this spiritual journey towards self-realization, towards self-discovery. We've got a nice crowd in here tonight, very much. Awesome. Awesome. So yeah, and um, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be, um, I hope to bring some relief to everybody and uh, get everybody comfortable with the realization that um, it's lonely at the top. What's up, everyone? Good to see you guys out. We have Atlas in the house tonight. He's supporting this episode with his presence. Everybody excited? He's making me just a little bit less lonely tonight. We got our cool camera shot, and I'm here. Great to, great to see everybody tonight. What an awesome crowd. Really, really fantastic crowd. Thank you guys very much. And thank you for all the shares. I've been getting a lot of shares lately, so I really, really appreciate that. It's really, uh, it's been helping my channel quite a lot. So thank you very, very much for that. So let's get into this, this loneliness thing. <clears throat> um, I, you know, I felt a little bit uncomfortable about doing a show on loneliness because I myself am alone and I've been alone for a number of years now. And, uh, and it's difficult. It's, uh, it's probably one of the hardest aspects of this journey is dealing with the, with the solitude. And um, that solitude is really, 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 really important to uh, get comfortable with because your eternal self is, is in solitude forever. If you really think about it, the, the singularity, the all of consciousness, the one, what we want to call it, the father, is alone forever, is alone forever. Can you feel the heaviness of that, being alone forever? I mean, really, who else do you have as the Father when you're the one? It's just the one, right? And we're kind of bringing that into the dream. We're, we're bringing that element into this dream. And it's a really, really important thing to, uh, to deal with, I should say, or um, to go through. It's a really, really important thing to go through. It's important to be alone until you're totally okay with being alone. And that may, you know, that I feel like I'm okay being alone. I feel very, very comfortable with it. But then there are moments like where I wish I had someone significant in my life. Being a, mostly just being able to share experiences with, right? That's um, that feeling of being able to share success or share tragedy or whatever that is. It's that feeling of having that connectivity. We want to share it. And part of that is, is, uh, a hard lesson that we have to learn about essentially realizing that everyone is us, right? That there is no other. If we're really going to get down this Zen non-duality rabbit hole, when you're in the dream, all of the people are you. Everyone's you. Everything is you. It's all you. So you're eternally alone. It just doesn't feel like that all the time. But being on this, this spiritual quest, um, you're really getting in touch what it feels like to be alone and it could be uh, could be scary it could be unfulfilling it could be all of these things that are painful but it's really important that you start getting getting set with that and, and feeling okay about it we have to fall in love with ourself you know it's true what they say no one's gonna love you until you learn how to love yourself that's very very true it's a very very true statement and as you wind down this path of self-discovery, you're going to find that people are going to fall away from your life. Friends will fall away first. Low, people that are vibrating at a, at, a, at a level that's lower than you relative to where your current uh, vibration is. And as you raise it, the people that you were previously vibing with are just going to fall away. They're tuned into a different station and you're, you're kind of moving your dial through station after station after station. So as you move, unless they're moving with you, they're just going to naturally fall away from your experience. Now, rest assured, it, it, it won't, it won't, they, they won't fall away from you in, in a confrontational sense. It'll just be like um, you'll forget to call somebody for a couple months and they'll feel the same about you. Excuse me. And uh, neither one of you will really feel anything strange about it. 
It's just that you're going to wake up one day and be like, wow, I haven't seen any of my friends for the last six months, that kind of a thing. And it will catch you off guard. And in the beginning, um, it's much harder, you know, especially like Friday and Saturday nights come around. Maybe the, typically the nights you're out blowing off steam with friends and or family. And uh, so if you're alone, you're not really able to do that. You can go out by yourself, but that can kind of be even more depressing a little bit, right? <laughs> But feel into that depression, feel into that, feel into what all that is. It's really, really important to get a sense of that and, and lean into it a little bit. Feel that pain, put that pain on for a second. Because that is eternal state. And if you're not comfortable with your eternal state, then we're in trouble, aren't we? You might as well go back to pretending. It just means you're not ready. There's nothing wrong with that. This is a hard part of this trip. It's very, very hard. So friends will fall away. They'll be the first ones to fall away. And then family will fall away too. Um, again, it won't be confrontational. It'll just be, there'll be just less interest there on, on both sides, on both sides. And these people will come back eventually. They will, they will come back to you as you move along the path because what's going to happen is you're going to find that you're going to find that most of your of your growth takes place during this loneliness phase. This is when the most amount of growth takes place. It was certainly like that for me. I mean, I was I've been on this path for over over good well over 20 years now, a joke in itself in the dream. But uh by far the most amount of my growth has, t has taken place in the last five years simply because I've, I've had nothing else to do but dedicate time to work on myself. And I keep telling you guys that this, this creating the space for this is what's going to make set the difference between sort of getting this and fully embodying this. You got to create the space for yourself even if you have to schedule it on a calendar and then as you get going on this, it'll get easier and easier because people will just start to fall away. Moments will fall away. Events will fall away. But don't be sad about it. Don't be sad about it. Just get with it. Just get with it and accept it. It's all about acceptance. It's all about acceptance. What a wonderful crowd in here tonight. Thank you. So, I see so many new names. This is wonderful. Thanks. So, so nice to see everybody. So, like I said, I was a little bit hesitant to give this presentation uh, when I was getting these comp. Some people were asking for me to do this. And I realized that <clears throat> at first I was like, ah, I'm not sure if I should be giving this presentation because I'm also dealing with loneliness and I don't know how much I have to offer to console, um, console you guys. But then I realized that, you know, as, as I often do, when I give these talks to you, I'm often giving these talks to myself as well. It's like, um, oftentimes it's like I'm hearing it for the first time too. And it's a nice little kick in the pants, you know, to kind of like quit your sulking, you know, you'll get over it. And just endure, you know, this is um, part of the whole trip. So, what is, where is all this coming from? Why is loneliness part of it? Well, like I said, the first part is to realize that everyone in your dream is you. So if you're with somebody and you're with a lot of people, it's really, really easy to get caught up into separation and not to perceive everyone as yourself because if we're engaging with other people all the time, they take on a whole personality of their own, right? And <clears throat> it's very easy to create this separation. But when you're alone, when you're in the world, but not of the world, when you're in the world and no one's engaging with you, you're just a, a silent observer to the world, it's much, much easier to get a, get a sense of, I'm in a dream and all of these people are me. Every single one of them is me, a reflection, uh, a mental archetype of myself here to show me something, projecting itself into my dream. Are you guys with me?
Loneliness is the root of all suffering, if you really think about it. Everything that you're trying to achieve in life is so that you don't end up alone, right? We're not really going after the Lamborghini or the money. We're going after these things that we think are going to attract people into our lives so that we're not alone. So all of these things that you think you're chasing, what you're really chasing is to be loved. That's the thing that you're chasing. You're, you're craving adoration. And that's okay. We all are. We all are. You've been set up for this. You've been set up by your mother. <laughs> it's her fault. <laughs> I'm only joking. But the first time that you, you, you saw yourself, the first time you experienced um, self as a child, you were probably um, held in front of a, of a mirror, you know, and, and your mother was with you and she's like pointing at you in the mirror and she's going, that's you. That's you. Look, wave. That, that, that's you. And that is where that separation happens. That's up until that point, you are your mother. You are the room. You are the dog. You are the food you're about to be. You are everything. There's you're you're fully connected to everything in reality as an infant. But the moment that self, I guess the self-realization happens, this the self-identity happens by looking in the mirror. And so it's true what they say, a mirror captures your soul, you know. When, when a child looks into the mirror and the mother points to the figure in the mirror and says, that's you, that's, that's who you are, there's a self-identity that's created. That's the moment that it's created. And that's, that's the very moment that you are separated from your mother. That's where the real abandonment happens. It happens to all of us. In a way, we're all experiencing abandonment issues because that's the first day of abandonment. We're on our own. Sure, there's lots of love and an adoration from our mother, but we're no longer part of the mother. We're now separate. We've been separated from the world. Lost. And we're craving that connection for the rest of our lives. We spend the rest of our lives trying to get that off of us. We're trying to, we spend the rest of our lives trying to unrealize that self. Whether you feel like you're on this path or not, even if you're not even spiritual and you're not even on this path consciously, everything you're doing in life, all of your actions are an attempt to mend that separation. That's what we're doing. We're separated from our mother and we are, we are tossed into a world of separation where no one loves us, nobody at all. No one cares. You know, it's really kind of sad. Um, I'm being a little bit older, <clears throat> and <clears throat> I'm out in the neighborhood all the day, every day, walking my dog or at the park or something. And it's really sad the way culture has turned into um, this very cold, distrusting culture. And it's so unnecessary. I, I grew up in a world, I, I also grew up in the South, I'm in Atlanta, so uh, the South is very um, hospitable, you know, everyone's very, very friendly, they call it Southern Charm, and uh, that's the way I grew up, and uh, growing up here, everyone said hello to each other, that's just what you do, you say hi to strangers, people pass by in the mall, you know, hi, you at least give them a nod and you say hello, you know, or a little wave to somebody across the street, even if you don't know them, that was a very... If you didn't do that, that was weird. You're a little weird if you didn't, if you couldn't even make eye contact. If you like looked down and you weren't making eye contact with the stranger, that was that was perceived as, oh, that person's got something wrong with them, you know. But we, now it seems like that's the norm. You know, I can take a walk around the neighborhood and wave to people, and, and they just look down or they're pretend to be in there, and they're not even on there. They're pretending to be on their phone, or they don't want to look up. They don't want to pretend. They don't acknowledge you exist. It's very strange. I feel like we've been programmed for that, and it's uh, 
Yeah, it's very sad to see that. And I, I hope, I encourage all of you to make an effort to be friendly to people. Um, you'll find that it just brings love out um, when you do that. It brings it up in you and it brings it up in the other person. And it makes the other person and you feel a little bit more held in this world of nobody loving us. You know, there's a lot of people who are alone right now. A lot of people. I, I think it seems like when we're alone... It seems like, oh, everyone else has got somebody, and it's just me. I'm the freak that's alone. You know, but it's just not true. It's just not true. I was um, watching a podcast the other day, and they were saying, uh, this woman was saying that by the year 20, uh, by the year, the year 2025, 50% of all people 30 years old and, a, and older would be childless and single which is really like, wow, that's a new paradigm. It's a real new paradigm. And not very comforting, right? It's like, ugh, God, this means this loneliness thing's going to go on and on and on. Doesn't feel very good, does it? So we're trying to get people to love us. We're trying to feel held. We're looking, we're craving for the adoration of our mother. And we're, we're craving that connection to our mother. We want that separation mended. And it doesn't it seems like no matter what we do, we can't heal that. It's just not possible to heal that. We can have significant others. We can cover it up with a significant other. We can cover it up with a, a pet. We can cover it up with alcohol. We can cover it up with drugs. We can cover it up with um, um, activities. We can cover it up with working, becoming a workaholic. So there's lots of ways to cover up this pain of being alone. But I find that the best way to deal with it is just to sit with it and go, wow, I am, I am really painfully alone right now. Just, and just kind of sit with it. I control nothing. All I can control is here and here. It's the only way to control it. It's the only thing I have control over. How can I make this pain, how can I transmute this pain into love for myself? And, and remember too that you're not being rejected from the world. It's not what's happening. And it can, your ego can make you feel like that sometimes has nothing to do with rejection. You're just simply vibrating at a different frequency. And the interesting thing is that nature abhors a vacuum. If you create a vacuum, you're going to fill that vacuum with new people who are vibrating on your space. <clears throat> Excuse me. Give me a second. Atlas is out. He's tired. <laughs> we might cover it with social media and have superficial friendship relationships and we call these people our friends because the program in Facebook or IG or whatever we're using calls these people our friends right they're not really our friends they're kind of more like acquaintances and they are, as much as I love everyone, I don't know you guys. I feel like I, I, I know some of you, but, uh, you know, we're, it's a different kind of relationship. So here we are. We're alone together. We're sitting here together, hanging out, and we're alone. Just feel that, that pain. Well, I should say all of this solitude is for us to more easily circumvent the ego because the ego gets its existence, it gets its power, it gets all of its energy from interaction. It's from the belief in other. It's that, that separation into me, them, is where the ego gets its energy and its power. So if there is no separation between what's out there and what's in here, and if it's all one thing, the people that you're encountering are you, and you're consciously aware of it. The surroundings you're encountering are all a part of you, 
and you're remembering it. No different from a dream. It's very much like a dream, right? All the people in your dream are you, are they not? You might have all kinds of people in your dream. Have you ever had a dream where there's someone in your in your dream with with tremendous detail? You could you could see every line in their face and every and you know every single thing about this person, but you also realize that you don't know this person in real life. You guys ever, you guys ever had that experience? I get that a lot. It's very strange. I'm like, man, how do I know you? I don't even know how I know you, but I feel like I know you. It's also important to realize that there's nothing wrong with you. It's not your fault. It's not your fault. Some of you might want me to talk about the being single and what that's like. <clears throat> So many people are single these days. And um, I need you to realize that we are in a weird time right now. You could say that World War III is already happening. And it's a psychological warfare. I mean, it's not bullets and tanks anymore. It's memes. And it's the social norms and the construction of our culture. I should say the destruction of our culture and replacing our culture with new with new norms, cultural norms. But this is all by design. All of this has been by design to create this new this new world that we're moving into. This transhumanist world. And I'm not a transhumanist, by the way. I I just I just recognize the writing on the wall. Will it follow through and happen? I don't know. I can't tell you what's going to happen in the dream. All of these talks are about pulling you out, out of the dream. But the dream is there. I can't, I don't, I have no control over the dream. I'm, I'm just a, I'm just an observer like the rest of you. But I recognize that by controlling my thoughts, controlling my, my feelings about things, I'm sort of sailing my way through reality, through the dream, and I'm easing my way through this and minimizing the suffering with awareness. So just to say that, don't feel bad if you're single. Don't feel bad if um, you think all women are crazy or all men are crazy. And you're, you know, I, I go home, I'm like, I'm just gonna be in love with my dog for the rest of my life. That's all I need, <laughs> just be my dog. I don't need anybody else. <laughs> but this has been designed, this has all been designed you know, this is what all of the um, the immigration is about. You know, the immigration isn't just happening in America. It's happening in every country. All of the countries are experiencing the same thing with immigration. And it's, it's the powers that be shuffling, shuffling the cultures because they need us to lose all of our sense of culture. That has to be stripped away so that there's no separation between people. They're trying to create a one-world culture, a one world religion, a one world government. And the more we're mixed up together, uh, all of our cultural um, things start to fall away. They just get too uh, diluted and we lose a lot of that stuff. So all of this is what I'm saying is has been engineered, all of it. <laughs> yeah, we are definitely all crazy, especially if you're watching this channel. Bonkers. <laughs> but um. But yeah, I read a book from the, I think it's from the 50s, a really amazing book I highly recommend. It's called Psycho-Cybernetics, which gets into all this. Where they, they basically talk about the engineering of, of the new world and what it was going to be. And it's all unfolding right now. Everything that book talks about is unfolding right now. So all of that to say, it's not your fault that you're in this situation. Uh, all of this is happening as it's been designed and it's also not a coincidence that right now you are going through a, a spiritual experience, a spiritual awakening. As I say all the time, it's, it's as above, so below. And I, I believe that as we awaken um, towards this singularity, it's a singularity of consciousness. Not only is it technological singularity as perceived in the dream, which is a reflection of the self, the personal self is going through an awakening 
towards no self, which would be the singularity, which is be the the oneness, which is being mirrored in our dream through technology. So everything is kind of coalescing and becoming one thing into singularity. And I think that that's not a coincidence. I think that um, we like to pretend and believe that there's a world out there and then there's me in the world. But but remember, all of the things I talk about on this in the show, there is no world out there. The entire world out there is a reflection of the world in here and in here. So as we start to awaken towards this gnosis of no self, this is mirrored in the dream by the experience of what we could call revelations from uh, the New Testament. This is why it feels like all these things are unfolding for us. All of these are revelations. They are. They are unfolding for this. All of these things are unfolding. But I think this is like a natural rite of passage. I think that the, that as you go through a spiritual awakening, the dream has no choice but to produce this particular dream. This is the dream you go through. But it doesn't feel good, does it? So we go on social media and we try to try to project ourselves out there. We're trying to make posts and do things to get a lot of clicks. We need that validation. We need that adoration. We're looking for that that excited adoration from mom. That's what we're looking for. And when we don't get a hundred clicks, it's like, oh God, nobody loves me. I only got 15 clicks. I post a picture of my dog, he gets 95 likes, but if I do it, I get 15 likes, right? Um, it's a sort of nihilism, right? It's it's kind of, it, it really is nihilism. We try to outdo each other. We try to outdo each other's stories, each other's pictures. And you know what's hard too is, uh, you go through the spiritual experience with when you're with somebody that could be very difficult you're going to find that it's very very difficult to learn a lot of these lessons when you're with a significant other because uh unless your significant other is on the same page with you you know you both have to be coming up together but it could be very that could be very very difficult so what do we do with this? What do we, how do we make this better? How do we feel better about it? How, how do we feel better about being alone? Use this time to fall in love with yourself. Fall in love with all of your inadequacies. Fall in love with all the things that embarrass you about yourself. And use this time to reinvent yourself. If there are things about yourself that you don't like, then just recreate them. There's no rule that says you have to be the same person you've always been. Create this new you with no limitation, no boundaries. Do you know how much easier that's going to be when you don't have people around? When you're like unsure about showing this new version of yourself in front of people? This, you're going to find so much power in this new self. I, I've told you guys many times, I'm, I deal with being transgender. And um, I know that when I, when I decided I wasn't going to take it anymore, and I was just going to express the true me, the true how I was, there was a power there that I can hardly articulate. It was just... Um, the feeling of of just owning the world being above the world it just felt like nothing could touch me you know it's a very very awesome experience if you can fall in love with yourself find self-respect it's a big one 
Because if you don't respect you, no one else is going to respect you, right? And I'm not talking about fake self-worth, you know. I, I, I encounter a lot of young people today with this really, really uh, overinflated sense of self-worth. And, you know, I, I, I can appreciate that. But it's like a fake self-worth. It's not, it's like a, it's a fake self-worth that's covering up for these huge gaping holes and, and, and self-worth that come from doing the hard work. Working on yourself, you know, diving into these little psychosis, little webs of problems in your minds and extinguishing them, improving yourself, working on yourself, working on your mind, working on your environment. Incidentally, your environment and your mind are one thing. Everything is one thing, but it's a direct reflection. So if you're trying to clean up your mind, and your house is a mess, it's not congruent, is it? We're looking for alignment, congruent. Thoughts, words, actions, behavior. Everything is just this, right? One thing. So think about that when you're living in your environment. Use this time to use your environment as a reflection of the mind. And uh, there's a great method called the Silva Method where you <clears throat> assign thoughts to objects and things. For, for example, you could do yard work, right? And um, you can start by pulling weeds. And that's the worst job in the world, right? We all hate pulling weeds. <laughs> but when you can do this as a form of spiritual practice, uh, you'll find a new love for pulling weeds. So what you do is you... You go through down, you get on your hands and knees and you get ready to pull a weed and you grab a hold of the weed by the root as much as you can. And you, as you're holding that weed, you assign something about yourself that you don't want anymore. Maybe it's something about yourself that doesn't serve you anymore. And you, you try to assign that meaning and that, and that thing to the weed. And then you just yank it out of the ground. You throw it in the trash, but it's symbolic. As above, so below. As above, so below. So by making that action of pulling that weed out, I'm pulling it out of my head. Great method of working on yourself. And that's the same for everything in the house, in your in your or in your room. Arrange things like the mind. Uh, if you go, if you walk through my house, there's it's, there's all kinds of little knickknacks and things, but everything is a reminder of the one. It's always pointing and reminding me about the one in some way. Makes it very easy, easy to stay here. Get a hobby and fall in love with that. It's something else you can do. Pick up a skill and master it. Whether it's painting or singing, running, working out, gardening, playing checkers, <laughs> could be a variety of things. But, but master something. Get, that will help with your self-worth when you get really great at something. It's a good feeling. And you'll find that others will respect you for it too. It doesn't have to be a, you know, it doesn't have to be the, the, the this thing that we're sold that you know you only have to make a lot of money to be respected or you have to do uh you have to do these great things just just master one thing be great at one thing however dumb you think that thing is be great at it playing harmonica whatever be great at it and you won't believe how much respect people will give you for that it's always great to encounter somebody who's really awesome at something isn't it it's a great feeling What else can we do? Well, we can start by making our world really small. I talk about that a lot on this show. Just make our world small. Yeah. It causes us to focus on ourselves a little bit more. Work on ourselves a little bit more. Work on not being cynical. We're programmed to be so cynical, aren't we? Gets back to what I was talking about before, where people don't wave, people don't look each other in the eye. Everyone's got this pessimistic, um, cynical attitudes towards life. We 
I can't say hello to this person. This person might rob me. Right? Stop being cynical. See the beauty in the world. See the beauty in your life's experiences. But once you get your world in order, you'll more and more fall in love with yourself. And the more you fall in love with yourself, the less you will care about being alone. You won't care. It'll be totally fine. And as soon as you're totally, totally fine with being alone, that's when everyone wants you. As I said, nature doesn't like a vacuum. It's going to fill that vacuum eventually. But it's going to fill it with people who are on your on your wavelength. It's going to fill it with people who are tuned into your radio station. Once you get your world in order and you fall in love with yourself, anyone who doesn't love you as you are isn't worthy of being loved. They're just not for you. So get your world in order and become this person, this creature that you are proud of. Become the person you've always wanted to be. Embody it. Fully embody it. Be as weird as you want. Be as lame as you want. <laughs> Preferably weird. Being a dinner roll doesn't serve nature. <laughs> the point here is just to remind yourself that life is a reflection of who you have become. And love isn't going to show up in your world until you have fully learned how to love yourself and accept yourself and accept being alone because you're alone forever you're alone forever truly alone forever because even when you have a significant other and lots of friends around remind yourself that all of them are you they're all you it's all you slipping away and pretending to be someone else to facilitate your dream Everyone's you. Everything is you. Everything is the dream. The dream of today. With no tomorrow. No next week. Just the dream of today. Forever. Forever. Are you guys having a good time? You guys uh, getting into this? You guys liking this? You guys have any questions? It's kind of a short one tonight. I ran through it a little quick. Man, look at this crowd. Awesome. Oh my God, 81 people in here? It's awesome. Thank you guys very, very much. This is fantastic. I think that's a new record. <laughs> so wonderful to see everybody. So if you have any questions, now's the time to uh, do it because I'm out of things to talk about as far as loneliness because, you know, like I said, I'm still dealing with it myself. I'm still dealing with it. But I feel confident that um, the more I learn how to uh, be okay with it, the, the more people have come into my life to make it not feel quite as lonely. And I'm very, very grateful for my friends who have come into my life and my family. It's been awesome. Thank you, Eric. I appreciate it. What part of Atlanta do you live in, Romdino? I live in Atlanta. <laughs> the city. The city of Atlanta. Come find me. <laughs> Let's see. Any other questions? Boy, a lot. Man, there's a lot of comments. If you guys are not in the chat room, if you're just listening, I highly recommend you get into the chat room because you will feel much less lonelier. 
want you'll feel much less lonely if you're in the chat room hanging out with all these people. Look at all these awesome people. And every one of these people is is doing the same trek that you're on. So make friends. Make friends with people. I'm in the Buckhead area, Rom Dino. Yeah. The borough of Buckhead. Thank you, Lady Spell. So glad to have you. Thank you. Awesome. Any more questions? I get to get out of here early? Yeah? Awesome. Well, thank you guys very, very much for hanging out. I love having you guys here and sharing this my Sunday evenings with me. It's uh, my favorite time of the week doing this with you guys. It's very, very fun for me. Very fun. And I hope you guys are enjoying it. I apologize for my weak internet connection here. It's been a little bit choppy, hasn't it? Just a little bit. Awesome. Well, thank you guys very much. I will see you guys soon. Uh-oh, I got a question that came in here. I keep forgetting there's like a little bit of delay. Eric says, what drew you to your spiritual journey? Um, I have to... Well, it's a couple of things. I wouldn't have called it a spiritual journey. I was a, a bona fide atheist and very, very obsessive about understanding the nature of the cosmos, which led me to eventually I started learning about multiverse theory. And <clears throat> once I got really into multiverse theory, that changed a lot of things for me. I was fa I be it became very, very fascinated with the nature of reality and and the mechanics of the of the mind and how that connection is working together and I was still an atheist when that happened um, and I wrote the book my first book becoming God and that was entirely from an atheistic perspective and right after I wrote that book is when I met uh, some psychonauts who introduced me to some very powerful psychedelics and from that point on I would say it was a true spiritual quest from that point on. Um, I wouldn't say I switched teams overnight from atheist to the spiritual camp, but it did happen over a slow, slow, slow process. And uh, yeah, I've been fully committed to the spiritual path ever since. I've gotten heavily, heavily into um, different philosophies from all from all walks of life, and I've, I've settled on Zen and non-duality as what resonates the best for me which is what I primarily talk about on this show um, it's the most astonishing thing and it will inevitably if you stay on this path enough it will inevitably reveal itself to you it'll first reveal synchronicity to you which will blow your mind repeatedly and then you'll have a full-on realization if you stick with it enough. And this full realization is a, a temporary ego death. It is a temporary suspension of your ego for you to realize who and what you are. And that from that moment, um, it's kind of like once you see, you can't unsee it. And it's a it's a confirmation beyond beyond anything. So yeah, once I had that confirmation, I've just been fully, fully committed ever since then. Nothing else is important. Like, I, I have things that I do, uh, obviously for work and, and for fun, and, and I do all kinds of stuff on YouTube, but all of that is secondary to my spiritual quest. Like, the spiritual quest is primo in my life. It's the most important thing. Las Vegas Beat says, what about rude people or others who take advantage of you? Are they all just a reflection of you as well? Yes, they are. They are. All those people are a reflection of you. So find forgiveness for them. And um, they are here to give you a lesson. That, that meanness is just for you to learn a lesson in that. You know? So forgive them. It's a big thing. Forgive them. Thank them for the lesson. And get the lesson that you are worthy of being loved. And treat it with respect. But if you don't respect yourself, how can you expect other people to respect you? That's the lesson. Find love and respect for yourself. 
and other people will treat you with respect for sure awesome any more questions you guys are easy tonight I have the most genius community on YouTube my playmates awesome well thank you guys very very much oh more Eric more questions hold on <laughs> What can we fans, playmates, do for you to best encourage you? Oh, you guys are already do doing it. You're the best fans ever. But thank you very much. It's very sweet of you. You're you're doing it. You're my my inspiration for doing this every Sunday night. So thank you guys. And um, it makes it very, very fun for me. It makes it much less lonely, for sure. So that part is awesome. Thank you. What fun stuff do you do? And I'm not going to talk about my personal life on here, man. <laughs> do you live in Atlanta? Is that what your deal is? You want to meet up somewhere? Send me a send me a message on my through my website, fourproductions.com, and then I'll connect with you. We'll get together and have dinner or something. It'll be fun. We'll hang out somewhere. All right. awesome <laughs> okay you do live in Atlanta well yeah we'll reach out I'm always looking to meet up with people who are cool how many how may we find wholeness and separateness to realize who and what you are to realize that you're in a dream so when you have a dream at night and you're asleep and other people are in your dream and you're doing all these things together all those people are you are they not Everyone in the dream is you. Everyone in the dream is there to facilitate the dream for you. Yeah. And it's the same in life. Everyone you meet is you. Is a reflection of who you've become. And that's what that's the way they're going to treat you. They're going to treat you the way you have become, the way you feel about yourself, the way you feel about the world. That's exactly what you're going to get. Call it karma if you want. Yeah. So since you know that everyone you meet is you, treat them with love. Treat them with respect. Say it hello to strangers. Make eye contact and wave. Say, I see you. I just want to recognize you and let you know that you're recognized and that someone does care. That's being compassionate. Thank you, Judy. Thanks for loving my music. I appreciate it. Thank you. That's right, Eric. Everyone is your teacher. Everyone you meet is your teacher. Yes. And take the lesson. And thank them for the lesson. Everyone. Awesome. I love you too, Denise. Thank you so much. <laughs> Cody comedy is great medicine. Yes, it is. I'll have to check it out. It sounds good. <laughs> awesome, guys. Thank you guys very much. I love you guys very much. It's been almost an hour here, so I'm going to go ahead and call it a night. But um, please drop comments and um, let me know if there's any topics you want me to cover. I'll talk about anything, anything. And I'll relate it back to the spiritual quest here. Okay. And if you guys wouldn't mind just dropping me a like, uh, as, as much as we have all this beautiful engagement in the chat, YouTube doesn't recognize that, so a like would go a long ways to helping. So really, thank you guys very much. I'm thanking you in advance. Peace and love to all of you. Namaste, everyone. And go play. Have a great week. I'll talk to you guys soon. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>